Are you surprised by the strength of the dollar at a time when emerging market central banks, some of them are actually exiting, uh, creating an arbitrage opportunity there, whether it's Brazil, whether it's Russia. Turkey, of course, has been singing its own tune. But you had also Sri, uh, Sri Lanka come out with rate hikes. And so how is this policy divergence uh, looking to you? So I think the policy divergence, in fact, is very much dependent on the, the macroeconomic backdrop in different countries, which does vary at this point significantly. There's also an element of a number of central banks actually trying to be going for preemptive strikes to make sure that they keep the, st the currency stable. So strength of a dollar obviously is not just function of the, the policy view. It's also the positioning in the market, which was very much against the dollar weakening, so coming into the year in 2021. So we've seen a reversal. I would say I'm slightly surprised in terms of how well bid the dollar has been over the last one month. But I do think as we get closer to the Jackson Hole, the markets will start to reposition based on the outcome of the meeting. Right, but long term, you know, as we get into 2022 and there's more talk about tightening, what is uh, your overall view on, on uh, the trend of the dollar? So I think from the longer term trend perspective, I still remain very much in the view that uh, I don't expect dollar to strengthen significantly. If in, in fact, if you draw a path in three horizons, so if you take the next 12 months, 12 to 24 and longer horizon, you will have next 12 months, you potentially will see some consolidation and weakening in dollar. As you get closer to the rate hikes and the tightening, there will be again a point where the dollar catches bid and strengthen. But again, you go to the third horizon, which is a very long term, I think dollar has a more neutral territory from here and no real reason to be much stronger. Okay, and finally, Neeraj, before we let you go, what, what would that mean for positioning across fixed income right now? What are you doing with your portfolio? So we continue to like areas which are a little less uh, impacted by the duration, more agnostic, in fact, if at all, the duration, uh, less impacted by the dollar view. So we specifically like Asian high yield. Uh, we are sitting in right in the middle of a dislocation. And if I look back last 15 years, this is the seventh correction in 15 years in Asian high yield. And every single one of the last six corrections gave you a really strong outcome in the next following 12 months. So given the low duration of that market, given the elevated spread levels, and to some extent, the discussion around China, where we do expect the policy to start on the margin easing, uh, we are we are very much sitting in the short duration camp on that uh, in that market with very high yield, and I think that's an area which one should actually look at. 